Guys, we are so sorry. We are trying to come on live, but we are having some technical difficulties with audio. So just bear with us a little bit. Um, okay. We're going to have to do it this way. Can you hear me now? Hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can hear you. All right. So, guys, we're so sorry. Thank you for your patience. Um, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. That was happening when you're going live. And normally, me and, 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 and Julita, we don't practice because it usually goes without any challenges. But the last two sessions, we noticed that we could, maybe we'd have to come in the room a little earlier just to double check that everything is working, which I did. So, can everyone hear us? Yes? Okay. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Awesome. Thank you, those of you that are joining in. Um, of course, we will try to um, answer as much as we can in the next 45 to 50 minutes. Um, first, let's talk. I hope everyone is okay. Julita, how you've been doing? I know you've been busy. Um, I've been busy. You know, um, pandemic is here, but we have not stopped working or creating or doing all of that good stuff. So I hope that everyone is doing well. Um, and yeah, let's, let's get right into it. We have a few questions pending from the last session. Maybe you want to start with that. Sounds and then good. Pick it up from the few ones that we have a few ones that came in this evening. Um, so we can touch base on that too. Some very interesting questions. Yeah, sounds good. So you had one, do you remember the one, the, the last yeah. one? I had a question, um, I got a question uh, anonymously asking about anal sex. So I thought, let's start into that straight away today. Yes. Um, the question was more about, imagine I would like to have, so for anyone joining just now, remember, we talk about sex, so don't be startled because we're going to go in heavy straight away. Um, we're talking about anal sex. So one of the questions we got was that... Um, this person wanted to know, what if I'm interested in anal sex? How do I go about this? Like, how do I start? Where, where do I start, basically? Um, and to me, it's starting off on just any way you would start off on sex. You want to know what you're doing, if you're going to enjoy it. It starts with communication. So you and your partner probably should have a conversation about, hey, I would like to try this, or this is a fantasy, or whatever. And you should probably have a conversation about doing this, about figuring out if this is something you would like, if this is something you're interested in, and then make sure you're prepared. Um, if I imagine having sex, I'm a very sometimes I think I'm a little OCD. I'm very much like I want to know for sure that I'm clean, that um, I smell nice, that I feel comfortable. And when it comes to anal sex, of course we have those like <gasps> taboo stigmas. Oh my God, what if um, I didn't wipe well enough? Or what if something happens or things like that? So just make sure that for yourself, you're very comfortable. You know, for sure, you just took a shower, you know, you didn't eat something that is going to be an irritant, for example. Um, make sure you didn't just um, have a dinner that is going to make you super gassy. Um, things like that. Like, try and make sure that you're in uh, your element, basically. And then it comes down to making sure that, again, you communicate with each other. So make sure you start off slow. There's no need to break out the fist like straight off because trust me, it ain't gonna work. Unless you've had a lot of anal sex, it ain't gonna work. Unless you're a porn star, it ain't gonna work. So please start off small. Think of fingers first. There are a lot of toys you can use that are nice and small that you can just start off figuring out what you do like, what you don't like, loop, Lube, lube, lube is your best friend when it comes to anal sex. Because don't forget, when it comes to um, vaginal sex, for example, we have our own body that helps us with the lube. 
when it comes to anal sex, that's not a thing. So you really need some help. Um, I think too, and adding up on, on looking for things that can help you, maybe going to the toy store together as well and explain your facilitator at the store, like, okay, I'm a beginner. What do you suggest? Um, you know, I've never done it before. What started small and build it up? Because um, we all know that that is not something that you're going to do every day. No. Right? No. no. I mean, unless it's something you want to do every day, by all means, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I but mean, it's probably something you do on special occasions or things like that. So really make sure, like Kenzie said, really make sure that you ask questions, you figure out what you want. Um, and again, start small. There's no need to straight away have to like, you, you even don't have to go for penile interaction straight away because sometimes that is just too big to start off on. Please. Some of the reasons why women do not even go back to that is because their first time trying it out went wrong. And then when they have another partner that maybe know what they're doing, because I mean, you have to be honest, your partner has to know what they're doing or have done it before, or maybe both of them. But I don't know. Um, I'm just saying, speak about it, have a discussion, about it, and give each other feedback. Or, you know, build up the momentum and make sure you can tell him, listen, I didn't like this or I didn't like that. Or he can tell you maybe next time, research it online, watch videos, watch porn together. Those are all things that you can do if you want to initiate that path. And like I said, like Julita said, if, if it's something you do every day and you put us but the women that I've spoken to, like, like do it for, you know, special occasions and stuff like that. Because unlike our vagina, our anus is not the same. <laughs> yep. So where our vagina stretches and goes back, um, our, you know, the, 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 the rare cannot do that. Yeah. So and please also remember, like, when it comes to orgasm, don't start thinking. Because if you look at porn, you will see these girls having magnificent orgasms from anal interaction. Yes. Nah. Uh-uh. No. You can orgasm, but then generally it's because there's a stimulus to, for example, your cl clitoris or um, someone is doing something else that is stimulating you. And that's why you're getting an orgasm. But it's not going to be just that penis in your anus. That's not going to work. So I think that would be the best. Yeah. And maybe, you know, right now, a couple of things that you guys want to do together. Search. Just move, build it up on that. You don't have to do everything the first time. You do one or two things. And then the next time, as you progress, you know, because it is a moment you're building up. And maybe after 10 sessions, like, better. who knows? Whatever yeah. it is get there and it's important for your partner to re to report to respect as well and to be able to share with you that is a progress and also know that as um as you might have thought of this with your partner you can also try this out by yourself huh? so if you find some toy that you like you can insert the toy first and then have like for example vaginal intercourse with yourself using whatever um you can do this with your partner as well but please just remember that this is something you build up you don't just you you're not a porn star so you don't you build this up yeah definitely so i hope that question was answered for um anonymous uh, audience i hope that he or she is listening and that we have given them some, um, you know, good takeaways and tips as to how to handle that situation. Um, another question that I had uh, that came in today was, how do I tell my partner, and this is a male, how do I tell my partner to dress more attractive or to be more trendy? So they are in the middle of comfort zone, or maybe she is in the middle of comfort zone where you think, I don't need to do anything else to entice my man because I already have him. I'm already married. We have kids, you know, uh, we have the picket fence in the white house. So I'm just going to walk around in my dirty pajama with my holy panties and, you know, we're going to keep it doing it. And this is me being very graphic. I'm just say, right. And the man wants to see a little bit more. He wants to see you because I mean, you have to give a variety of things. There will be times that you're going to go sleep with your 
all of that stuff not. <laughs> and there are other times that maybe he wants to see you with a nice lingerie yeah. Not only in the bedroom, but also outside of the bedroom. So what I would say in that case, and this is just coming, pers especially from a fashion uh, perspective, and so would Julita as well, because we share similar um, daring fashion statements, and we follow trends, and we take uh, bold moves for plus size and curvaceous women that normally they don't. So I would say. I don't get advice from a fashion person, a stylist, um, or your favorite store, you know, but it's, remember, he's trying to tell her that. So maybe a good way to do is to go shopping with her. Take her out on a shopping date. You know what, babe, we're going to go to your favorite store or what you think would be her favorite store, what used to be her favorite store. I don't know. Find that out. Do some research. Take her out on a date. Do some lunch. Build it up. And then you guys go and you take out some outfits and you leave her try it on. And maybe sometimes all she needs is a little push to feel confident again. Maybe she has lost confidence in herself. Maybe she don't know how to go back to being trendy or being the woman that you fall in love with. What do you think, Julita? Um, I, I completely agree with you. And what I was thinking while you were saying that maybe take her shopping, I would say think of things like... Um, Babe, we're going to have a date night and I want to um, surprise you. So is it okay if I pick out an outfit for you? Um, there are these gorgeous um, things you can find on Pinterest where these boyfriends, um, I don't know where people find them. I don't want one of those, but who put down, like lay out a whole beautiful outfit for their partners with like a necklace and earrings and everything. And that's for that date night. Um, so that's something you can do. But I would caution for being careful in knowing why your partner might not want to get um, dressed in a nice way or do things anymore. Um, I know that for me, for example, sometimes when my weight fluctuates, I start struggling. And then I'm kind of like, oh, I don't want to wear pretty clothes because I'm not pretty. So why would I wear pretty clothes? So sometimes it also has to do with having a conversation about this, like, expressing to your partner i think you are drop that gorgeous and i'd love to see you again in something that i can really it's like a painting basically if you put a painting in a frame that doesn't fit it the painting doesn't pop out and i'd like to see you pop out again i'd like to see the beautiful person i fell in love with so have a conversation sometimes about these things just to figure out where her head is at because maybe she'll go shopping with you, but she won't pick out anything because her head is not there uh, for whatever reason. But it's good to know so that she doesn't feel extra pressure or anything. But you can explain like, I miss the gorgeous you. I miss the, the, the person I fell in love with. And have also let you know if there's her issue. You know, is, is, is she being depressive? Yeah. Is, you know, those are all issues that can... Uh, trigger your your behavior right how you do things um that she just had a baby for um, example yeah weight or has she lost extreme amount of weight exactly yeah is she stressed on the job all of those and again it goes back to the key which is always if you don't try to dig deeper into what's going on into your partner's life and i speak this from a it's very hard for you to try and fix things before they get to a detrimental point where there's no turning back. You know? Exactly. Yes. Uh, fix if you get to the issue, not in terms of pressuring her or him, but just kind of like trying to find out where their head is before you make your next move. Because your next move might be the wrong move for that particular exactly. thing. Yeah. So you want to yeah. be also you be uh, conservative about that. Um, that is going to be the turnaround for the results you know so you don't want to end up making like a failure moment because otherwise you'll be even further from the actual goal you're trying to reach so you really want to be careful with like for example if you go to a store and you haven't checked first where their head is at you might end up having a partner who's completely dejected afterwards and didn't find anything and all of that and that would just be really sad yeah, so I think that those are some good tips, you know, um, try and find out what is wrong with her on a deeper level. So that's the communication part after and now to build it as a surprise, so to build it as a 
a couple's activity um, to engage her in, you know, for instance, a closet cleaning up. That's also very a, a good idea. You can, oh, babe, you know, let's, this weekend, let's clean out our closet. Let's give up the things that are not working anymore, that are not functional for both of us. Then she doesn't feel like she's being triggered, you know, oh, you're focusing only on what I'm doing. Both of you in your closet, get some new stuff, and that would be the perfect moment. Say, hey, let's go shopping now. Next week, we have some space in our room. You know, let's go shopping. Let's go get some new stuff. You could show her things on the internet, send her stuff on WhatsApp. Like, hey, babe, I saw this, and I think you would look gorgeous in it. Just little things that women sometimes need that makes a big difference for us. Um, and then uh, are very practical, and we are very emotional. So... <laughs> It's trying to find that balance between all of that to actually continue to make your relationship work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, if you're just joining in, so we're, we're, I think we're on question number two. The first one we uh, talked about uh, how to ask uh, someone or try, wanting to try uh, anal sex. We had gave some tips, tips about that. And the next one that we just had is uh, trying to tell your partner how, you know, uh, to, to entice her to dress back to what she was, a more provocative, more sexy, you know, more, more attractive. Um, what is our next question? Ma. Go to our page on Facebook. How do you get your partner about being intimate? Example, less watching TV or talking business or work. More mind blowing activity that you can make more memories. Bad is too tired and when they come home they just want to watch TV. Maybe they just want to lounge on the couch the rest of the night. And don't think that, okay, maybe my partner, you know, needs something, he or she. So yeah. what is Yeah. Um, as usual, I'm going to say the same thing as always. Please communicate with each other. So have a sit down and talk about these things. Talk about, hey, this is what I noticed. Is that also something you noticed? How come? Um, is it diff more difficult at work? Are you stressing out about things? What's going on? Um, and then also come up with ideas. So have a couple of solutions already in your head. And with solutions, I mean more ideas of things to do together. So like fun stuff you can do together. One thing I would like to try and remember, if your partner works 40 hours a week, 40 plus, um, trying to do things in a week, if they work during the week, might be pushing it a bit like, in that sense, I feel like we can all understand, hey, that's maybe not the right moment. And but you, you, sorry? And if you have kids in the midst of that 40 Exactly, hours. exactly. So, you know, you can see how that might be an issue. But you have the weekends. So take the weekends and, like, um, make, have date night. Just say, okay, next weekend, Saturday, um, the kids are going to be at the babysitter or whatever, and we're going to have date night. So there's a lot of things you can think of in ways to get back the intimacy. But intimacy is also, let's say it is during the week. You don't have time to do things together because everyone's tired. That's cool. When the kids are in bed, try and carve out half an hour, an hour for us time. So go sit on the couch and watch a show you both really like that you're both following and do that in a very together way. So it's not, Hey, I'm on my phone. You're on your phone. We're watching this and then the time's up and then we go to bed. No, it's very much like, um, if physical touches your, um, love language, start touching each other, cuddle, um, have a leg over his leg, like do things like that. Um, make sure, uh, you kiss, make sure you're touching, make sure um, if that's not what, what you like, but you're more of a like talking to each other, pause it every now and then to show when there's something happening that is a good conversation starter or whatever, pause it, have a conversation together. Things like that also build intimacy. Intimacy doesn't only have to be like a date night or really big activities. It can be small things like that. It can be cooking together. 
um, being together in the kitchen. I mean, I would just probably kill someone if they're in my kitchen while I'm cooking, but some people really enjoy this. So, you know, you could cook together. You can do things like that to build up intimacy. It doesn't have to be large activities. So just cap. Still watch it together and make it more, you know, just cuddle, just hug more, touch more. Who knows? Maybe you might have to do some foreplay and put the, the TV on pause. That could happen <laughs> in between of all of that stuff. Um, especially when I mean, Netflix asks us, are you still there? No, I'm not. I am having foreplay. That's okay. That's perfect. Well, that, that is what I mean. So, I mean, I think those different moments that you can build, it all depends as well on the openness of each other and how do you talk about it. Sometimes they talk, we talk, but you can talk. I don't necessarily have to listen. I mean, those are the challenges of communication. So, True story. Listening, the listening part is crucial because you can listen to everything, but unless something really you're understanding what is happening and what is the result of your action or of your behavior, then it won't really make a difference for you because you're just, you're listening, you know? I would like, um, if there's something I can give you guys as a thing to remember, it's like, am I hearing what you're saying or am I listening? And to me hearing, I can hear, there's a lot of noises around me. I can hear just about everything. I can hear the air conditioning. I can hear what's happening outside. I can hear a lot of things. I can hear Kenzie talking. But am I listening? Am I listening to the words coming out? Am I understanding what Kenzie means when she says what she says? Am I really thoroughly trying to apply those words and think of what I think of those words? That's the difference for me between just hearing it because it just comes in here, goes back out there? Or am I listening? Am I really actively trying to engage? Okay. If you have any question as well while you're listening to us, feel free to put it in the comments in the chat. We are reading them and um, you know monitoring what comes in as well and who comes in the session. So feel free if you have any, any spur of the moment question also to just put uh, out. else we have Kenzie I just have to tell you today you have very spotty internet because I can hear you and then I can I can't and then I can and then I can't I don't know what's going on it's like it, it, it's falling on and off I don't know yeah. Yeah. Oh, the drives of technology sometimes uh, our next question do you have any tips on how to handle stress better both men and women so that's a very, very broad question. Um, and it really depends. I mean, it really depends. It's not even stress is not even a thing that is that much different for men or women. It's actually just individually different. As we once discussed a long, long time ago during our first um, Real Talk, we talked about uh, stress responses. And stress responses are individuals so as i explained that time when we're where when we feel fear or when we're scared um and stress is a response like fear or uh, being scared or things like that it's feeling like this pressure on us we have three different ways of responding you have the flight which means running away you have the fight which means going ahead and like attacking the problem and you have freeze which basically just means kind of like, oh, what problem? There's no problem. I'm just going to continue life as if there was never a problem. So those three responses are very different and they do not depend on men or women. It's very much a, just whatever your type of person is, your char character experiences you've had in life. But also know this is something that is just you. You're either this one or this one or this one. It's not something you can go and change as much. It's just something you are basically. Um, but you can start to recognize it. You can start to know, hey, I'm the kind of person who freezes or I'm the kind of person who runs away from the problem. 
um, for example, I go into drinking or all of these things, or I'm the kind of person who wants to attack the problem. But also, even though um, we might think one of these are the better one, n not really, because not every problem needs an attack. Not every problem needs you to run away from it, and not every problem needs you to freeze um, and just ignore the problem. So. It really depends on the situation and it's more important that you can recognize your own response and then do something with it more than trying to respond in a different way because that's quite hard because this is very biologically um, anchored in us. And I think um, managing your stress level as well has, like, stress has become kind of like the second norm, right? You have two two stages in your life. You're either happy or you're stressed. Yeah. So because it has become the norm of justifying as well some of our behavior and our patterns and our decisions and all of that stuff. Well, I do X because I'm stressed. I do Y because mm -hmm. I'm stressed, right? Again, there's a lot of individual inclination to how you, how you are handling that particular situation. Exactly. That is why it's going to be difficult because it's kind of like you have to do first an individual analysis for yourself to find out what is exactly the stress. Is it work related? Is it personal related? Is it a combination of both? Um, am I having anxiety because of that? Do I need to speak to a professional that is not, for instance, my partner? Should, you know, advise further help? Like, it goes deeper than just that because stress has and been... Also also, we need to remember that um, we're, we're the kind of society now that we want things to be fixed like straight away. There shouldn't be any problem. I want to just things to just go, 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 go. Um, stress is also normal, like not chronic stress, don't get me wrong, but like short term stress generally also just helps you work better, for example. Um, if you have a project which has to be done, that little bit of pressure is not bad. It's not a bad thing, but we're starting to think that any kind of tension, any kind of pressure we need to just get rid of. Um, and that's not entirely the case. Unless you notice that you're waking up every night for three months, um, uh, like sweating, like then I think we're talking chronic stress. But unless it's that, if it's a night of, you know, just before a really important exam or you have a, a job interview or um, now during COVID you're feeling a little stressed, that's okay. It's kind of logical. But I think a lot of us want to get rid of the stress, but stress is something that is in, it's in life. You know, if one thing, you have different levels of stress. Yeah. because that is something that could get you sick it can even kill you it can give you depression you know so that's a different type but overall um we will always have some challenge in our life let's not call it stress let's call it challenge yes for the sake of changing the yeah. world yeah but i always have a challenge in your life um some bigger than others either which way your challenges need solutions and to move forward and uh, what I would say is try to be more solution driven. I'm very solution. My partner always calls because he will, he's the one that want to tell me the whole story about what's happening. And I'm like, okay, so that's the problem. What is the solution? So I want him to go from the car is broken, for instance, or I have a flat. I want him to go from there to, but the mechanic is on his way. <laughs> right. So I, I, I'm, I'm ready to give you a session here because you are not listening to what your partner needs. He just needs you to listen. Guilty. I'm, I go real quick from, and not, not, not only with him, but even on the job. That is totally built in me. I'm like, listen, the whole story behind why this collapse is interesting, but I need to know what we're going to do with the things that collapse. So... And, and what you miss in that is that maybe you will make the same mistake bef again because you didn't hear as to what the reason, what was the reason that this collapsed, right? So that is on me, guilty. I plead the fifth, definitely. But sometimes you just need to pay attention as to what is happening yeah. in terms of what is creating the stress level. 
and most of us don't do it and we it rapidly solve me for sure um try not to focus too much on the problem and try to look for the solution as fast as possible so that i could get, take it on my to-do list and move on to the next challenge right that is how i look at it it's not always the best the best approach but it helps me maintain my stress level relatively lower yes <laughs> let's yes. let's call it that so um, i mean given given stress is, is really difficult because we all handle it very based on everyone's individual situations and yeah. we have daily situations i mean we have over 60,000 thoughts as an individual so imagine <laughs> within those six thoughts i guarantee you that you're going to have a lot of thoughtful stress <laughs> yep so yes um let's continue this one is a hot one so get it get Ooh, i like it <laughs> just that you like get ready so should swallowing be considered a thing for every woman to do? And if no, do you think that at some point every woman should start swallowing during oral sex? Oh well. Yes. So yes. let me let me just recap if I heard you correctly. So is swallowing something that every woman should do? Right. And um, if not, then is it some is it at some point that they should start doing it? Like, is are you having a discussion with your partner? Like, listen, we've been. Years, I think now it's time for you to swallow. I mean, you know, when is it going to happen? We're going to talk the freaky part about what it is my fa men find so mind blowing about swallowing. I'm going to give this one to you. You're on your own. <laughs> okay, so my brain is going like, but okay, let's start off. Um, again, as usual, first of all, please communicate. So my dear men listening, please, 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 if you have some sort of agreement with your partner and you guys are having oral sex without protection, please, if she said, tell me when you're coming so I don't have to have it like all in my face or in my mouth or whatever, tell her that you're about to come please because this comes back to communication and it sounds like you know i'm joking a bit but at the same time you're breaking trust at this point if you had an agreement you're breaking trust if you just go ahead and um uh, be afterwards be like yeah but i didn't know i was coming come on i know i'm coming you know you're coming so that's not how any of it works but to go back to like should you swallow Honestly, I don't think there are any rules to sex. I mean, unless the only rule to sex is please make sure you're in agreement about what the two of you are doing, but the rest of it, there's no rule. So I don't, there's no guidebook anywhere that says women should swallow or women should do this or this. So let that part go. However, if you want to start doing it for your partner that's on you that's a, that's something you get to decide but also if you don't want to do this that is also something you get to decide because it still is your mouth you're the one swallowing it so you do have a say in this you can maybe come up with like an, a mutual agreement hey you know what you can come in my mouth but i'm gonna spit it out afterwards because I just don't want to. Um, you can come up with things like this. At least have some sort of midway uh, agreement, but just make sure that whatever the two of you agree, keep to it. So for the ladies, if you have said to your uh, partner, I will swallow, and then you're like, <coughs> kind of like that, also not very cool. Cause that kind of, mm, again, breaks the trust. The other way around like i already mentioned men please don't just come if you said you were gonna tell her tell her again it all comes down to how do we communicate with each other can i trust you to do what i'd like you to do in bed and to remember the things i like you to do in bed I think it's important because uh coming from a caribbean culture you know that we have a lot of taboos as well oh 
you know, things that you should and should not do, things that your mom, your grandmother, or whatever told you that you should not do. Um, a lot of cultural aspects, some religious aspects as well. Um, like you said, there's no, there, there shouldn't be any rules in, in your sex practices because there really aren't, right? What you have is mutual respect for what you, what each other, what each of you like and what, yeah. the, what are your boundaries. So I think it's important to know what are your boundaries, how to create them and how to communicate them and how to respect them with each other. So if it's a conversation that you're going to have with your partner about this, you have never done it before. You have never done it before and he wants you to do it. Walk into the person and listen, I have never done this before or when I do it, I spit it out or I put it in a tongue, whatever I do with it. Some men actually get very offended when you spit it out. But that's why you want to have this conversation He's beforehand. Exactly. So that you know exactly what, what would trigger his offense, right? Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, and just be really open about it. It is a conversation between you two, not you and the world. Not you and your grandma, not you and that's when you and your man or, or, or your partner or husband or you know uh, her whatever <laughs> whatever it is it's a conversation between the two of you and the decisions made within that frame um are also for both of you right and only you should be accountable of you, of those decisions at that point so just have an open talk about it i think there are so many things that sex so many possibilities there's so many exploring moments that people can do and don't get me wrong there's not a book you might go there and search you might go there and look at porn or you might go there and see what what is trending now in the porn industry what is the latest you know position or whatever what's the latest kama sutra but at the end of the day before trying any of these new techniques or any of any exploring because obviously you need someone to do it with. <laughs> so I that mean, does help. Right? I mean. So yes, that was that was one. I have another one. This um has to do with uh babies. Yes. Babies? Babies. Babies. Okay. So basically, um the email, the message was I I've been, we've been, I've been together with my partner for a couple of years already. Yeah, we had the discussion of babies. However, right now I am not ready to become a mom, and I've been given an ultimatum, kind of like I become a dad now. I've waited, sorry, I've waited long enough, and I think now it's time for me to become. How do you, how do you work around that? Because here is a man that you love, and telling you well it's time and you as a woman telling him well i'm not ready i have goals or i don't have any goals i just i'm just not ready i don't even think that you need to have a justification if you're not ready to have child kids kids are a big commitment <laughs> um honestly like it doesn't matter to me if this is a female or a male so this works for me both ways unless you want to have kids don't have them if you don't feel like this is the time you want to have them um this is the moment please don't have kids just because you love someone or just because you want to be with that person because it can go well i mean there's there's the small percentage where this works well and then the person who didn't actually want to have kids afterwards is like oh but i'm still happy we had this kid blah 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 the large percentage of this does not end up well because you feel pressured. You're having a child that you actually don't want to have. All these changes happening. Um, when it comes to being a female, all these changes happening to your body. And if you're not 100% sure that you want to have this child, please don't do it. It's unfair to yourself. It's unfair to your relationship. Because I want to put out there that majority of the relationships actually tank after having kids so the happiness in the relationship tanks and eventually it gets back a little bit up again it'll never reach the top part again but it gets a little bit up again after the kids leave the house um 
which means that you are deciding to let your relationship tank Meanwhile, you're not even sure you wanted this child. So you're putting even more pressure on your relationship, which is not fair. And it is unfair to your partner because you're, uh, sorry, unfair to the child because you're basically saying, yeah, I mean, whatevs, I'm gonna have you because I want your dad. And you're not saying I'm gonna have you because I want you and I want to be here for you. And I want to struggle to through all the horrible, horrible times that we will have to get to the good part. And that's, in my case, only the fact that I love your dad and I wanted your dad to have a child. That's not a reason to have kids. That is never a reason to have kids. And I also want to add to that, that from the, from the, the other side of the coin as well, scenarios that can create postpartum depression. It can create for you never to have a connection with your child. Kind of like pre-force. It was forced, you know, it was it was an it was not intentional. Normally when you guys are are having a baby, or usually when a couple is having a baby, they talk about it. Okay, we are ready for it now. The time to have is never ready. You're never it's never the perfect time, right? No. Never the perfect time. One year your bank account might be better than and you think, okay, well, now is the time. Happens. Something happens. Set you back. You know, so it's never, but if you have a conscious um, discussion with your partner and say, now is the time that we're going to work. Um, that's a whole list of things, right? And it's important for both of you to be involved, both of you to want it. Because from the mom's side, I was uh, diagnosed with postpartum depression with my first kid. Um, and that had nothing to do with me not wanting the baby. It had to do with, basically, I was overwhelmed. I was like, okay, I have to take, for this li take care of this little person um, while I'm still taking care of myself, basically, because I, I, I'm like, how am I going to do this? A single mom, um, I'm 29. I just thought it was overwhelming. And luckily, of course, I read a lot. I was able, I knew that what I was suffering for. I told my healthcare, I said, listen, I'm going to do this. He said, okay, yeah, you have po postpartum. Uh, let's check back in the next 10, 10 12 days. And if, if it continues, then we have to handle it from there. Luckily, we didn't have to step it further than that, right? But that's the other side of the coin. When you pressure something like that on a woman, because ultimately it is her body, it is her decision. It is, it is, she is the carrier of that child, right? And when that child comes out, both of you have the same responsibility and commitment, which is to create an environment for that baby where there's love and wanted and there and there will be fulfilled in everything that they want. So that is something that you also have to take into consideration. How being ready for a, a child is never the perfect moment, but you definitely need to take your partner's um want and needs and 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 believe, right? And timing. And maybe yeah. you can and also for the person who asks this, the female who asks this, do remember that if it's more things like, if it's more vague things like, no, but I have to first have this sense of perfection before we can have a child, that's another thing. Then you're, then it's more about you having to change your mindset because trust me, perfection is not going to happen and it's not going to happen before you have a child and it's not going to be there after you have a child. So let that part go. But if it's really out of a, I don't know if I want to have kids, don't have them. In that case, please just don't. Even if you love your partner this much, just don't. Um, and I wanted to add for the postpartum depression for anyone who was listening and was thinking, oh, is that because um, I don't, I didn't want my kids or, or whatever else. That is just a biological thing that has absolutely nothing like you either have a vulnerability for it or you don't, please don't worry about that part. So that has nothing to do with wanting or not wanting your children. But you can imagine that if I'm already stressed if i'm already doubting whether i want this child and i have this vulnerability that's not going to work out well together so it's more in 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 line with that but it's not about oh if i don't want kids then i'll definitely have that that's not how any of it works all right so overall make sure that you discuss this and if it gets 
where he reevaluate the relationship that you guys have had because of this then maybe he's not the right partner for you no no you know but i think how- any relationship that sets an ultimatum i don't i don't i don't know like that use that word in a relationship so be yeah. careful with that yes i agree totally and we have one more we have some time still to take one last Well, we got five more minutes, so it's about like how how rushy I can answer this. I I can talk very little, maybe. Okay, so let's see. Um, so then let's see if this is gonna be our last question. So our last question says, um, I'm a female and I'm on the freakier side more than my husband, and lately I've been wanting, I've been asking him. to film one of our sessions. Oh girl, love it. So, however, he's more on the conservative side and more on the paranoia side and he is not really open to that. So, how what can I do to convince him even if we have to sit and then delete it? Or, I don't know. Give me some ideas that I can work with. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um no pressure. First of all, If your partner really doesn't want it then he really doesn't want it like that's just something you have to um think of um but however you can um start off with smaller things don't maybe just um ask him to take pictures of you um while you're in sexy or provocative ways um set the timer and have sexy pictures together have a bluetooth remote for your phone have the phone set up so that you can take pictures of the two of you together afterwards you can delete them but just have a little bit of fun with this technology coming into your relationship wise like you can start like building it in a little um from there if your partner seems okay with that you can see if you guys can start maybe building it in that you could tape it one time um maybe he just wants a little bit of it taped so then again you could use one of those bluetooth remotes and just set a timer and just be like okay this little part will um film for example um at the same time if your partner really doesn't want to is it that important to you that like you would want to force him over this so sometimes it's also just thinking okay well that's okay we'll just let it go but you can always ask him to for example film you while you're having um a session by yourself which could be totally sexy for him and maybe from there he'll be like oh, oh my god i want more of that um and that might lead into other things um you could even do it as a surprise for him so you set up your um uh phone for yourself and you film it and you send it to him just a short clip you send it to him and maybe that'll open up like the communication but just be very careful not to put too much pressure cuz every time you come back to it and he's already said no you're just going to make him go further and further into i already said no and i don't want to so be a little careful there and also from the paranoia part <laughs> cuz i'm i'm one of those <laughs> i always say i want to be um the president of the united states so i can't have stuff out there i can't i cannot so from the paranoia part just be very careful as well and the stuff that you're sending and you know that you're sharing on because once is there the phone get hacked get stolen your computer you have to think beyond that as well and i think i could understand from his part um be more conservative and more cautious about that because yes you just have fun you're going to film it but so many things could go wrong the following morning, your kid pick up the phone to play for it for instance and just see something that you know was not supposed to see i mean those are the scenarios that would make you paranoid exactly but honestly the easiest ways to do these things um coming from someone who wants to be the president of the united states make sure that like you delete things so for example whatsapp has this gorgeous function in which i send something we have to make the deal that you will check it straight away so i will say something like hey babe i'm going to send you something now um 
if you need to check it. If I then delete it within seven minutes for both of us, that's fine. Then it's gone. Then it's fine. Then I make sure I also take it off my phone, but I've at least had that little taster of something and then we can just delete it. But don't get me wrong, just go old fashioned if you need to. Um, you can use a phone that is completely like a throwaway phone that you guys just have lying around in the house because it's old and just tape it on that. If you still have, I don't know if anyone has that, but if you still have a, a video recorder, like an actual one, use that. Is, is again is based on your individual taste and is based on how far you're, you're going to go for your partner and how you're going to satisfy each other but <clears throat> steps usually helps you know filming not everybody is it can be mind blowing it can be mind blowing for both of you in a good way and in a bad way in a bad way in a bad way yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would say you know just think of the ways that you feel the safest, the way that you're going to make him feel the safest for him to participate. Um, and maybe it might be a process that is longer that you're not ready. Maybe it's going to take him some time to warm up a couple of sessions. You know, but don't make, don't leave that define you having a good man or having a relationship. Yes. You know? Don't leave that be the reason why you will lose a good man or just is your relationship because you want this so bad that you know my partner does not jump on board i mean you know what i mean let's but yeah. let's what we have in house and, and if it's that big of a deal for you you might want to just figure out why is it that big of a deal for you why is this a deal breaker when you have a very good man and everything else is fine but just he doesn't want to take the the videos i mean why is that that big of a deal um, I understand we all have our, our, our wants and needs and things we like, but a deal breaker, I would not, I can't really see this one as a deal breaker. No, me either. I don't think, I mean, there are things that all of us will tolerate in our relationship and things, other things that is a no, no, no. And not only sexual, not only, but just, you know, I mean, disrespectful and yeah, but they're just things that I will not settle for. F is not that deep, <laughs> right? Just <saying. laughs> F is not that deep, and if it's not, if it doesn't, uh, again, define your relationship for what it really stands. If you have a committed man, if you have a good father in house, if you have a good man, if you have a, overall a good marriage, you know, a good provider and stuff like that, reevaluate for yourself. Indeed, is this so important? And what can you do to, you know, to maybe to change it maybe there's something else that you need to do a different approach something that you need to do for yourself you know to get that out of your system right um, yeah because it, it could be that you're looking for adventure or something exciting or whatever but then maybe try and come up with something else that does fit your partner um, maybe for the two of you it's having sex in public places in a car or something please don't go and do it everywhere but like find excitement in that way but Figure out if it's this big of a deal, figure out what it is for you that you need this. Yeah. We're almost at the end of our session. You have to close up with. Um, um, I think you just asked me if I had anything to close off with. Um, basically just for, I just saw someone asking a question um, what's going on here? If you just tune in, um, this is our monthly show on sex, relationships, dating, whatever, and anything and everything in between. We talk about all of it, um, mainly to give us as Caribbean people a chance to talk about these things that are very important, um, but we find taboo or we're like, oh, you can't talk about that. So today we've gone from anal sex to stress to swallowing to um, uh, babies to videotaping yourself um, or and your partner. So I feel like that describes basically all the topics we discuss here. Um, so if you have a chance, follow us at next month again. 
Um, we don't have a date set yet, but as soon as we have it, it'll be out there. Um, follow our Instagram. We love your comments. We love to hear from you guys. Please ask all the questions you have um, and we'll try and answer them. Definitely. I will also share this on our IGTV so that you can replay it. If you didn't get a chance to follow the session this evening, um, like Julita said, we will put out the date for November. We are all busy, so we try to work around each other's schedule to see which Saturday fits us the most. But basically, this is what we're doing. We're just creating a platform where we can be open about speaking about topics that shouldn't be taboo in 2020, basically. <laughs> so um thank you for joining guys thank you for following our page um continue to share invite your friends to like them as well we also have it on facebook real talk and conversations um i'm gonna speak with julita behind the scenes to see maybe book and see to give it a different dynamic because we've done a lot of them on instagram and now that we have facebook maybe we can try one in on facebook as well yeah. yep. for audience and you reach maybe a lot of people that do not have instagram yet <laughs> they're more facebook oriented maybe they'll be able to follow us there so we'll speak about that and we'll see if we can come up with a consensus that it's going to work out um for the facebook platform yeah so Sounds thank good. you for us and we'll see you next month on our monthly real talk and